My name is Shobita Parthasarathy. I'm an assistant professor and co-director of the Science, Technology, and Public Policy program in the Ford School. My area of expertise is in the comparative and international politics of genetics and biotechnology. And in 2007, I published a book entitled Building Genetic Medicine, which compares the development of genetic testing for breast cancer in the US and Britain. As you can imagine, myriad genetics plays a central role in that story, both in the discussion about uh, the discovery of the BRCA genes, but also in the story of how testing developed. And then finally, in terms of the aggressive intellectual property position that they took in terms of shutting down a great deal of research and also other testing providers. In 2007, the ACLU contacted me because of my work on this issue, and they were trying to get together, figure out who might be the appropriate plaintiffs in, uh, if they were to launch a lawsuit. And so I worked with them. Since I had done uh, a historical study, I knew who the players were, and so we spoke about who might make good uh, plaintiffs. And then a couple of years later, when they were ready to launch the lawsuit and starting to figure out how to do the argumentation, they also asked me to submit a declaration in the case. And the declaration was about 30 pages in length, and it basically summarized the findings of the book, particularly vis-a-vis -vis Myriad, that is, focusing on the process of scientific discovery, the development of testing services, and Myriad's use of its intellectual property position. So at this point, there's little question that the case will be appealed. Uh, Myriad Genetics' major product is the BRCA test, and so they don't want to lose that. So for sure it will be appealed, and what will happen is unclear. And, and that's because it's a very complicated question. On the one hand, if patents on human genes are invalidated, that calls into question uh, the 2,000 patents that have already been issued. And it also will have a serious blow for the biotechnology industry, which has largely been built on uh, patents on human genes and other upstream uh, living organisms or, or products of nature, pieces of living organisms. On the other hand, one could also argue that the biotechnology industry uh, is kind of an anomaly in that it interrupted what is traditionally a collaborative uh, environment of biomedicine and biological science and that perhaps without patents on upstream research tools, then it might actually lead to more innovation and be better for society. The other question that's interesting is whether or not saying that patents on human genes uh, are products of nature, if the, if the ruling holds, uh, whether or not that'll call into question other kinds of patents, like patents on stem cells, for example. There also could be see they could also be seen to be products of nature. In terms of the broader implications of this case, there, there are three, I would say. The first is whether or not patents are good for innovation, and in what circumstances patents are good for innovation. This is a case in which I think it can be pretty clearly argued that patents weren't really great for the innovation process. But how should we think about this from a policy perspective? Should we, where should we draw the line? The second is how should we think about the broader implications of patents in terms of the costs of healthcare? Again, in this case, it seems pretty clear that the uh, existence of a patent increased the costs of healthcare. But, you know, many people argue that if you're going to think about the medical or health implications, you should talk about the fact that innovations are available to the public at all because of patents. But what does it mean if the costs of that are really, really high prices? And should those kinds of things be considered when we're talking about uh, the role of patents? So that starts to raise the question about what are the kinds of things that we should be thinking about when we think about patent law. Should it be more than just economic competitiveness and narrow ideas about what it takes to stimulate innovation? Should it be broader questions about the health implications, the moral implications of commodifying life, and the scientific implications of uh, how patents might change the culture of science. Those are the kinds of things that I think we're about to start a national discussion about, and I'm really excited to see where that national conversation of goes, regardless of what happens uh, in terms of the outcome of this particular case.